Now, coping with climate change. In this edition of our series, Hari Srinivasan reports from the Louisiana Gulf Coast, where rising seawater is claiming the land people have lived on for centuries. Louisiana's wetlands aren't just about alligators. This place teems with bizarre creatures, incredible plants, and secrets waiting to be discovered. You get a bunch of Spanish moss on there, you get some rain, the Spanish moss. Join us as we show you 20 strange things found in the wetlands of Louisiana. Number 20, alligator nests. Louisiana's swampy wetlands, where still waters and vibrant plant life create a hushed atmosphere, hold a fascinating sight, alligator nests. These ancient reptiles, with their powerful forms, have a nesting process that reflects their long history in the bayou. A female alligator, large and purposeful, carefully selects a nesting spot. With her strong tail, she clears vegetation and shapes a mound of mud and plants. This nest becomes her protective domain until the young are ready to emerge. Each egg, roughly the size of a goose egg, has a tough shell built for the swamp's environment. Interestingly, the nest's temperature plays a crucial role. It determines the gender of the hatchlings. Temperatures below 82 degrees Fahrenheit produce females, while those above 91 degrees result in males. This delicate balance is essential for the species. When the time comes, chirps from within the eggs signal the mother. She gently uncovers the hatchlings and carries them to the water in her mouth, beginning their lives as part of the bayou's enduring ecosystem. Number 19, the Manchac Swamp. Deep in the heart of Louisiana, there's a place where the veil between the living and the dead is said to be at its thinnest. The Manchac Swamp, a vast expanse of wetlands and waterways, is home to more than just alligators and cypress trees. It's also the domain of a powerful voodoo priestess named Julia Brown. According to legend, Julia was a healer and a seer, blessed with the ability to commune with the spirits of the swamp. She lived in a small cabin on the banks of the Manchac, where she would brew potions and cast spells for those who came to her seeking help. But Julia was also known for her dark prophecies, and one in particular has haunted the swamp for generations. On her deathbed, she is said to have uttered a chilling curse. One day, I'm gonna die, and I'm gonna take all of you with me. Sure enough, on the day of Julia's funeral in 1915, a massive hurricane swept through the area, killing hundreds of people and leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Many believe that it was Julia's curse that brought the storm, a final act of vengeance from beyond the grave. Today, the Manchac Swamp is still a place of mystery and magic, where the spirit of Julia Brown is said to linger. Visitors report hearing strange sounds in the night, the creaking of old timbers, the rustling of leaves, and the eerie, mournful singing of a woman's voice. Some even claim to have seen Julia herself, wandering the banks of the swamp in her white dress, her eyes burning with an otherworldly light. Number 18. Strange Bubbles If you've ever taken a boat ride through the swamps of Louisiana, you might have noticed something strange. Big, mysterious bubbles rising up from the depths of the water. Some are as small as a pea, while others can be several feet across. And if you're brave enough to get close, you might even hear an ominous hissing sound as they burst. So what's causing these weird bubbles? It's due to the natural process of decomposition. You see, the swamps are full of dead plants and animals. As they decompose, they release gases like methane and carbon dioxide. These gases get trapped in the muck at the bottom of the swamp, and when they build up enough pressure, they rise to the surface in the form of bubbles. But here's the really cool part. Scientists have discovered that these bubbles are actually a crucial part of the swamp ecosystem. They help to circulate nutrients and oxygen throughout the water, and they provide a unique habitat for certain species of fish and invertebrates. Number 17. The Pea Farm down in the swamps of Louisiana, there's an old abandoned prison that's got a reputation for being one of the most haunted places in the state. It's called the Pea Farm, and it's got a history that's as dark as the water that surrounds it. The Pea Farm operated from 1905 to 1950. During that time, 
it was known for its brutal treatment of prisoners. The conditions were so bad that many of the inmates died from disease, malnutrition, and even straight-up torture. It was a place where the strong preyed on the weak, and the guards turned a blind eye to the suffering. Nowadays, the pea farm is nothing more than a crumbling ruin, but some say the spirits of those who died there still linger. Visitors report hearing strange noises coming from the abandoned buildings, like the sound of clanking chains and distant screams. Some even claim to have seen ghostly figures wandering the grounds, their faces twisted in agony. But here's the really creepy part. The pea farm is completely off limits to the public. The government has sealed it off, and anyone caught trespassing can face serious fines and even jail time. So if you're thinking about taking a little ghost hunting trip down to the bayou, you might want to think twice. Number 16. Killer Snakes Louisiana is home to some of the most venomous snakes in the country, and the swamps are their playground. There's the western cottonmouth, with its distinctive white mouth and potent venom. There's the copperhead, with its beautiful but deadly patterned skin. And then there's the Harley Quinn coral snake, a creature so wild and colorful it almost doesn't seem real. The Harley Quinn coral snake is a true marvel of nature. Its body is covered in vibrant bands of red, yellow, and black, like a poisonous rainbow. But don't let its beauty fool you. This snake is a killer. It hunts by grabbing its prey by the head and injecting it with venom, paralyzing it before swallowing it whole. Coral snakes are notoriously reclusive, preferring to hide in the underbrush and avoid human contact. But every now and then, an unsuspecting hiker or fisherman will stumble across one, and the results can be deadly. The venom of a coral snake is so potent that it can cause respiratory failure and even death if left untreated. Of course, not all of Louisiana's snakes are so dangerous. The speckled kingsnake, for example, is a harmless creature that feeds on rodents and other small animals. The corn snake, with its beautiful orange and red markings, is a popular pet among reptile enthusiasts. Number 15. Bonnie and Clyde's Ambush Site You've probably heard of Bonnie and Clyde, the notorious outlaw couple who terrorized the South during the Great Depression. But did you know that the site where they met their bloody end is said to be one of the most haunted places in Louisiana? It all went down on May 23rd, 1934, on a lonely stretch of road near Gibbsland, Louisiana. Bonnie and Clyde had been on the run for years, robbing banks and evading the law at every turn. But on that fateful day, they drove straight into a police ambush, their car riddled with bullets before they even had a chance to react. The story goes that Bonnie died instantly, but Clyde managed to stagger out of the car before collapsing in a hail of gunfire. The police pumped over 150 rounds into the couple, leaving their bodies so mangled that they were barely recognizable. Today, the ambush site is a popular tourist attraction, with visitors coming from all over to pay their respects to the legendary outlaws. Number 14. Feral Hogs the sound of grunting, squealing, and snorting of a herd of feral hogs on the move strikes fear into the hearts of farmers and landowners across Louisiana. These creatures, once confined to a few isolated pockets of the state, have exploded in population in recent years, rooting up fields, destroying fences, and threatening native wildlife. Feral hogs, also known as wild boars, are not native to Louisiana. They were first introduced to the region by Spanish explorers in the 16th century and later by farmers who allowed their domestic pigs to roam free. Over time, these pigs bred with wild boars, creating a new hybrid species that was larger, more aggressive, and more difficult to control. Today, there are an estimated 700,000 feral hogs in Louisiana, and their numbers are growing every day. They reproduce at an astonishing rate, with females capable of giving birth to litters of up to 12 piglets every year. And with few natural predators and an omnivorous diet that allows them to eat just about anything, they're a true force to be reckoned with. Number 13. Sinkholes in the Swamps Sinkholes are one of the scariest natural phenomena, and Louisiana is no stranger to them. These gaping holes in the ground can open up without warning, swallowing cars, houses, and even entire city blocks. So how do sinkholes form? Well, it all has to do with the area's geologi. Louisiana sits atop a layer of soft, 
porous rock called karst, which is easily eroded by water. Over time, underground caverns and tunnels can form, and when the roof of one of these caverns collapses, it creates a sinkhole on the surface. In Louisiana, sinkholes are a constant threat, especially in areas where the geology is particularly unstable. In fact, the state has some of the highest rates of sinkhole formation in the country. When one opens up, it can be devastating. Homes and businesses destroyed, lives lost, and entire communities left reeling in the aftermath. They even open up in swamps and swallow trees with a sickening slurp, leaving only the faintest ripple to mark their passage. Number 12. The Invasive Nutria Nutria, also known as koipu, are large, semi-aquatic rodents, reaching up to 2.5 feet long, with webbed hind feet, long tails, and distinctive, bright orange teeth. Not native to Louisiana or anywhere in North America, these invasive animals were first introduced to the region in the 1930s by fur farmers hoping to establish a new industry. However, when the fur market collapsed, many farmers released their nutria into the wild. Nutria have thrived in Louisiana's wetlands, where their burrowing habits and constant gnawing destabilize levees and damage wetland ecosystems. Today, nutria are a major problem in Louisiana's wetlands. They reproduce at an astonishing rate, with females capable of giving birth to litters of up to 13 young every 130 days. And with few natural predators and a voracious appetite for wetland plants, they're causing untold damage to the state's already fragile ecosystem. Efforts to control the nutria population in Louisiana have been ongoing for decades, but so far, they've had limited success. But perhaps the most promising solution to the nutria problem is also the most unexpected, eating them. Nutria meat, which is lean and low in fat, has become increasingly popular in Louisiana in recent years, with chefs and home cooks alike experimenting with new ways to prepare this invasive species. From nutria gumbo to nutria sausage, there's no shortage of creative ways to put these rodents to good use. Number 11. Cypress Knees If you've ever taken a stroll through the swamps of Louisiana, you've probably noticed something strange poking up from the water. Knobby, conical protrusions that look almost like miniature stalagmites. These are cypress knees, and they're one of the most fascinating and mysterious features of the bayou. Cypress trees are true wonders of the wetlands, massive, ancient giants that can live for hundreds of years. They thrive in the deep, murky waters of the swamp, their roots spreading out in a tangled web beneath the surface. But when the water level drops, something incredible happens. The roots send up strange, knobby growths that rise above the surface like periscopes. These are cypress knees, and despite decades of study, scientists still aren't entirely sure what they're for. Some believe they help trees breathe, allowing them to take in oxygen even when their roots are submerged. Others think that they might provide structural support, anchoring the trees in the soft, spongy soil of the swamp. But one thing is for sure, cypress knees are a true marvel of nature. They can grow up to 10 feet tall, and they're often covered in a thick layer of moss and lichen that makes them look like something out of a fairy tale. In the early morning light, when the mist is rising off the water and the sun is just starting to peek through the leaves, there's nothing quite as magical as a grove of cypress trees with their knees poking up like sentinels. Number 10. Spanish Moss with its long, wispy tendrils, Spanish moss looks like something out of a gothic novel. But here's the thing about Spanish moss. It's not actually a moss at all. It's an epiphytic flowering plant, which means it grows on other plants, using them for support but not for nutrients. Instead, it gets everything it needs from the air and the rain, making it a true survivor in the harsh conditions of the swamp. Spanish moss has a long and storied history in Louisiana, with tales of its use dating back to the days of the Native Americans. They used it for everything from insulation to medicine, weaving it into baskets and mats, and even using it to treat fevers and skin ailments. 
In the 1800s, Spanish moss became a popular material for stuffing furniture and mattresses with factories springing up all over the South to process the plant. But it wasn't until the 20th century that scientists began to unravel the mysteries of this strange and beautiful plant, discovering that it's not only a marvel of nature but also a crucial part of the ecosystem. Number 9. Fish Burrows in Louisiana's wetlands, there are eerie mounds of mud dotting the landscape. They almost look like miniature volcanoes, with little holes at the top where smoke might come out. But these aren't volcanoes, they're fish burrows. More specifically, they're the burrows of crayfish, those little freshwater crustaceans that are a staple of Cajun cuisine. Crayfish are burrowing animals, which means they dig tunnels in the soft, muddy soil of the swamp to create a safe place to hide from predators and lay their eggs. But here's the really cool part. Crayfish burrows are actually a crucial part of the wetland ecosystem. They help aerate the soil, allowing water and nutrients to penetrate deep into the ground. They also provide habitat for other species, like small fish and amphibians. Of course, crayfish burrows aren't always welcome. In some parts of Louisiana, they're considered a nuisance, especially when they start popping up in people's yards and gardens. It's not uncommon to see entire lawns dotted with little mud chimneys, much to the homeowner's dismay. Number 8. Giant Salvinia If you've ever seen a swamp covered in what looks like a thick, green carpet, chances are you are looking at giant salvinia. This invasive aquatic plant is one of the biggest threats to Louisiana's wetlands, and it's spreading at an alarming rate. Native to South America, giant salvinia was first introduced to the United States in the 1990s through the aquarium trade. It's a fast-growing plant that can double in size every few days, forming dense mats on the surface of the water that can be up to three feet thick. The problem with giant salvinia is that it outcompetes native aquatic plants, blocking sunlight and depleting the water of oxygen. This can have a devastating effect on the ecosystem killing fish and other aquatic life and making it difficult for native plants to survive. But giant salvinia isn't just a threat to the environment. It's also a major headache for humans. The thick mats of vegetation can clog waterways, making it difficult for boats to navigate and interfering with recreational activities like fishing and swimming. Efforts to control giant salvinia have been ongoing for years, with researchers experimenting with everything from herbicides to biological controls like weevils that feed on the plant. But so far, nothing has been able to stop its spread entirely. It's a sobering reminder of the damage that invasive species can do and the importance of being careful about what we introduce into our ecosystems. Number 7. Magnolia grandiflora with their glossy green leaves and enormous white flowers, magnolia trees are a sight to behold and a true icon of the American South. Unsurprisingly, the magnolia tree has a history that stretches back millions of years. Fossils of magnolia leaves have been found dating back to the time of the dinosaurs, making them one of the oldest flowering plants on Earth. The magnolia grandiflora, also known as the southern magnolia, is a particularly stunning variety. Its flowers can grow up to a foot across with a sweet, lemony scent that fills the air. And when the petals fall, they create a carpet of white on the ground that's almost too beautiful to walk on. But magnolia is not just a pretty face. Its wood is prized for its strength and durability and has been used for everything from furniture to flooring. In traditional medicine, magnolia bark and leaves have been used to treat everything from anxiety to asthma. Perhaps most impressive of all is the magnolia's ability to thrive in the harsh conditions of the deep south. It can withstand extreme heat and humidity and even the occasional hurricane. It's a true survivor. Number 6. Bald Eagles. Nesting. There's something truly awe-inspiring about the sight of a bald eagle soaring through the sky. With its snowy white head and tail and its piercing yellow eyes, it's a creature that demands respect, a symbol of strength, freedom, and the untamed wilderness. In Louisiana, the bald eagle is making a comeback. Once nearly extinct due to hunting and habitat loss, these majestic birds are now thriving in the swamps and bayous of the Pelican State. And for those lucky enough to witness it, the sight of a bald eagle nesting is a true marvel. 
Bald eagles are monogamous creatures mating for life. They build their nests high in the trees, using sticks, moss, and even bits of discarded plastic to create a home for their young. The nests can grow to be enormous, up to eight feet wide and weighing over a ton. Now it's time for today's subscriber, Pick. Louisiana's wetlands are a haven for the strange and unusual, but some rumored creatures are wilder than others. Legend speaks of a bizarre beast with 20 legs, tough hide, and teeth that defy description. Something straight out of a sci-fi nightmare. This swamp dweller supposedly haunts the waterways of New Orleans, lurking unseen for centuries. The story gets even wilder. It was supposedly caught on camera once. Someone thought it was just an old log, but then the creature started moving and vanished into the swamp. So, what do you think? Could this creature be real, or is it all a big hoax? Let us know in the comments. Number 5. Eastern Screech Owl As you walk through the moss-draped woods of Louisiana at night, a sound might pierce the humid air, a high-pitched, tremulous wail that seems to echo from the shadows themselves. It sends a shiver down your spine, the unsettling feeling that you're not alone. But fear not, it's just an eastern screech owl, a master of the night. These tiny owls are the smallest in North America, measuring just 6 to 10 inches tall. But what they lack in size, they make up for in personality. With their distinctive ear tufts and piercing yellow eyes, they're a true marvel of nature. A creature that's both adorable and a little bit spooky at the same time. Eastern screech owls are masters of camouflage. Their mottled gray and brown feathers allow them to blend in perfectly with the bark of the trees they call home, making them almost invisible to the untrained eye. But when they want to be seen, they have a trick up their sleeve. They can puff up their feathers to make themselves look twice as large, a useful tactic for scaring off predators and rivals. But it's their call that really sets them apart. Unlike the deep sonorous hoots of their larger cousins, eastern screech owls have a repertoire of sounds that's truly unique. They can whistle, trill, and even make a sound that's been described as a horse whinny, a kind of high-pitched, quavering wail that's sure to send a shiver down your spine. In Louisiana, eastern screech owls are a common sight, or rather, a common sound. They can be found in woodlands and swamps throughout the state, their eerie calls echoing through the night. Number four, bald cypress swamps. Bald cypress swamps are found throughout the American South, but they reach their full glory in the wetlands of Louisiana. These swamps are like something out of a dream or maybe a nightmare, depending on your perspective. The water is dark and still, reflecting the twisted branches of the cypress trees like a mirror. These ancient giants can live for up to 1,000 years, and they have a special adaptation that allows them to thrive in the swamp. Their roots grow above the waterline, forming strange, knobby protrusions called cypress knees. In the fall, the needle-like leaves of the bald cypress turn a brilliant orange-red before dropping to the ground, carpeting the swamp in a rusty blanket. It's a sight that draws visitors from all over the world, and one that's sure to take your breath away. Number 3. Ghost Orchids If the bald cypress is the king of the swamp, then the ghost orchid is surely its queen. This ethereal flower is so rare and so elusive that even the most dedicated botanists can go their entire lives without ever seeing one in the wild. Native to the swamps and hammocks of Florida and Cuba, the ghost orchid is a true marvel of nature. Its delicate white petals seem to float in midair, tethered to a slender stem that can grow up to three feet long. But what really sets this flower apart is its unique way of life. You see, the ghost orchid is an epiphyte, a plant that grows on other plants, using them for support, but not for nutrients. In fact, this orchid has no leaves at all. Instead, it has a specially adapted root system that allows it to take in water and nutrients from the air around it. Even more incredible is the fact that the ghost orchid relies on a single moth species for pollination. The giant sphinx moth, with its long, curled proboscis, is the only insect that can reach the nectar hidden deep within the orchid's twisted petals. Without this moth, the ghost orchid would be unable to reproduce, a fragile partnership that underscores the delicate balance of life in the swamp. Number 2. 
sunken boats. The waterways of Louisiana are like a graveyard of sorts, littered with the wrecks of boats and ships that have met their end in the murky depths. And in the swamps and bayous, these sunken vessels take on a special, almost mythical quality. Imagine paddling your canoe through a narrow channel, the water so still and dark that it looks like black glass. Suddenly, your oar strikes something hard and metallic, and you realize that you're floating above the remains of an old steamboat, its rusted hull rising up from the silt like the bones of some ancient creature. From the earliest days of European settlement, the rivers and bayous of the state were the lifeblood of commerce and transportation. Steamboats and flatboats plied the waters, carrying goods and passengers to and from the bustling port, cities of the Gulf Coast. But a swamp is an unforgiving place, and many of these vessels met a watery end. Storms and hurricanes, treacherous currents, and hidden snags, all of these took their toll on the boats that navigated Louisiana's waterways. And then there were the pirates and the smugglers, the renegades and the outlaws who made their living on the margins of society. These men and women were the stuff of legend, their exploits celebrated in song and story. And when their luck ran out and their boats went down, they became a part of the swamp itself. Number one, floating marsh islands. In the vast open waters of the Gulf Coast, there's a sight that's sure to make you do a double take. Floating islands of marsh grass drifting gently on the waves like great green rafts. These floating marsh islands are a marvel of nature, created by the same forces that have shaped the Louisiana coastline for millennia. They form when large chunks of marsh grass and soil break away from the mainland during storms or high tides, carrying with them a teeming ecosystem of plants and animals. As the islands float out to sea, they begin to take on a life of their own. The vegetation on the surface continues to grow and spread, its roots forming a dense mat that helps to hold the island together. Underneath, a complex web of marine life takes hold, from tiny plankton to schools of fish and even the occasional alligator. In recent years, however, the floating marsh islands of Louisiana have taken on a new significance. As climate change and rising sea levels threaten to swallow up vast swathes of the state's coastline, these islands have become a vital tool in the fight against erosion and land loss. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.